as a producer, how would you explain their success? Like, is there some, something different about them, especially in this era of music? You know, I would say the simplicity, which it's interesting because in the last, like, I would say over the course of like the last maybe six years, like five to six years, you know, you've seen a lot of, a lot of simplicity in music. Like prior to, like, I mean, you think about, you know, the early 2000s up until like 2000, you know, probably 13, maybe everything was so overdone and so overproduced. You think about some of the pop songs that were out and they were just like, there is so much going on, you know, and everything is just, there's like a billion different instruments, that kind of a thing. A lot of automation, a lot of plugins, a lot of processing. And then you had some artists kind of come along, even Billie Eilish is one of them, where everything all of a sudden was extremely simple, very minimalistic. Charlie Puth kind of did the same thing. And so I think with them, it's just they pull from a lot of the old, you yeah. know, like um, a lot of just older influences in, in terms of rock and stuff like that. But the fact that they're a four piece and they're not using all these loops, you know, they're not, you know, over processing again, the vocals, you know, and, and putting a ton of like Melodyne or auto tune on them and things like that. You end up gaining something out of that that I think has been lost for a while. And I think that's why people like them a lot. That's one of the reasons I think people like them a lot. Yeah. Is there something like different to their sound? Because I feel like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of Queen as well, the way they change up the, the beats. Yes. And stuff. Like you'd never get bored. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, like ever. It, it continuously changes. And a lot of that is because he doesn't like, he doesn't go crazy with his vocals in terms of like these high, high notes and things like that. So you have to rely on those rhythmic changes to have contrast in the music. And they're like absolute masters at that for their age, which is really cool, you know? Is it also cause we're kind of tired of hearing the same, you know, hip hop, like kind yeah. of sounds? <laughs> I know I am. So <laughs> yeah, you know, in that, when you look at hip hop and you look at, you know, a lot of pop music and everything, you're, they're literally using the exact same sampled sounds for everything you can go through you know the top 10 on spotify and you're going to end up with you know five songs in a row that all have the same hi-hat or have the same kick you yeah. know but with with rock music i mean i know from personal experience just to even and i talk about drums a lot because that's kind of where i you know i come from but it applies to all the other instruments as well you literally will spend days getting a drum sound you know, setting up all the mics, so, you know, across the drums. I mean, you have room mics, you have overheads, you have, you know, one on each tom, one over the snare, one under the snare, you sometimes one on the hi-hat, and you sit there and you continue to work them, retune them, get them to sound exactly like you want them to fit the mold of the record. And the vast majority of the time, you're not going to be able to recreate that exactly. You know, so you end up with this unique feel and this unique sound. The same thing goes with guitar, you know, I mean, every amp is different, every guitar is a little bit different, you know, all the pedals that you use are all different, and then you add the vocalist and on top of that, and it's completely different from anything else, and it always will be, you yeah. know? And, like, how would you say, like, it's working in the U.S. now, because obviously they're Italians, and I'm not sure rock usually hits in America this well, like, I, I mean, yeah. right now at least, like, how would you yeah. explain that? It definitely hasn't lately. I mean, it's it's been a while, but Personally, I think it's it's one of those things like rock will never 100% die because it's a specific feeling that you can't really get from other music. It's, it's like high tempo and aggressive. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, like what you go to a rock show for, it's specifically for that feeling. And when you listen to it, it's specifically for that feeling. And you don't get that out of hip hop, really. You know, in some, some hybrids of it, you kind of do, but it's never that. You know, and you you don't get it out of pop, you don't get it out of jazz, you don't get it out of anything else. So humans always have that feeling. They always want to to feel connected in that way, you know, on on that plane of emotion. And so I think with them, it's just people are craving it more yeah. than anything, you know. And the fact that they're an Italian band, I don't think really matters anymore. And I think that's why, you know, it's it's happening with them. I mean, you look at what's happened with K-pop. You know, and all of these Korean pop artists have broken into, you know, the U.S. now and broken into other countries and hit the charts on those as well. So it's almost like people really don't care as much, yeah. first and foremost, you know, about the language. And that's actually something really interesting that I just talked to um, Barrett Jones. He's the guy that's actually he's producing my band's album 
along with me and he did the Foo Fighters, he did Nirvana, he did like Pearl Jam and all these amazing, amazing artists. And I've always been a firm believer in this, but, and I mean, this is the way that I listen to music as well. And a lot of people give me a little bit of, you know, hate on the channel for it, but it's true for the vast majority of people. You really don't listen to the lyrics the first time through. Yeah. You feel the song, you know, and it takes like probably four or five times before you actually listen to the lyrics. So the melody is important. The rhythm is important. The feeling that you're getting out of it is important. Do you think it's also because it kind of started on the social media as well? I would say probably. I'm actually starting YouTube channels for a lot of other people and helping them kind of cultivate their channel. And some of them are artists. And the reason I wanted them to start on YouTube is because people need to become invested in you as a person first yeah. in order to listen to your music anymore because it's the market's so saturated, so overly saturated with so much. There's so many options. It's ridiculous. So you really don't ever know what to pick unless you already kind of like the person or the band or the group. So I think Eurovision had a huge impact on them. I mean, they could be playing the same music and never have had that opportunity and never been introduced to people like that. And it wouldn't have it might not have taken off as well and as much as it did. You know, you hear artists that are incredible but never get any traction at all. But I think that's that has a lot to do with it. They use social media in the, in the right way and they had some good promotions, some solid, you know, just ideas to, to push them and actually mold them in the right direction. Yeah. Do you think also it's because um, of their message um, that they're very appealing to people because they're young, they're pretty open to anything you know in society they're talking about you know anxiety like lgbtq plus community uh feminism mm -hmm. and stuff like that do you think it helps yes absolutely i think it just again reinforces you know the music it's the same thing that we were kind of talking about with the lyrics the music's already there and the music is good and they're already unique anything that comes after that is just going to reinforce it and you know drive it home You know, because it's yeah. just like you just keep adding on top of it, adding on top of it, and it just gets better and better. Also, I think they're really different for like rock artists. Like, they're yeah, really, you know, glam rock kind of thing. Like, they're very I fashionable. Love. And <laughs> yeah, I, I love that so much. I like... wanted to do that for so long. It's like the coolest thing ever. I'm so happy to see it coming back. Like, warms my heart. Yeah, because like, was it in like 2000s that, you know, punk rock was trending? Mm hmm. So yeah. How, like, how come like it's changing again? I mean, I love it, but like, it's insane that it's changing again. You know, I think it's because punk rock. I mean, one of the reasons I think punk rock ended up falling out is because there were so many bands that ended up sounding exactly like the others, and then it ended up becoming this just perfectly pressed piece of like, you know, just just a perfect product. And you're thinking of it like of it as a product, you know, you're going to do it this way, this way, this way. And so everything ends up sounding kind of the same. That and also, you know, paying for a band to tour is a lot of it's a big pain and it's a lot of money. So, you know, labels move to DJs who just one person with a table and that's it, you know, to make yeah. significantly more. They don't have to pay them all, you know, and there's nothing, you know, they're not going to go and throw TVs out of hotel rooms and, you know, that kind of a thing. <laughs> It's much easier. Well, they might, but you never know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, again, people just crave it. And that's why it's coming back. Yeah. And it's coming back in a different form, which I think it's a, a really cool old school form. Because, I mean, you can't really do something that was done just 10 years ago. You know, you've got to pull from way older, way farther back sources. You know, um, I've done ton plenty of people on the channel where it's like, okay, I hear Fleetwood Mac in this. Like, I hear, you know, the Stones in this. Like, I mean, it's just... it's. It's really cool. Again, it warms yeah. my heart. <laughs> yeah, they've talked about being a fan of Led Zeppelin as well, like loads mm -hmm. of like rock artists. And I think you can actually hear it in loads of songs like Ditty Boni. Big time, big yeah. time. <laughs> you know, even on the way that the drums are put together, like oh, with the sound and everything like that, the way they're mixed, yeah, you can hear it big time. Yeah. Also, like there, there are versions of uh, pop songs like Begging and, you know, like Let's Get It Started. I think they made it really... I don't know, like original and it works. Like, I think that's why it also attracted young people. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> agreed. And, you know, I feel like, again, that kind of just opened them up to this whole new market. People were like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I want to hear that again, you know, yeah. especially when it's something that's kind of familiar, which is dangerous ground to walk on if you're not as unique as they are. 
you know, because you can get caught in covers really quickly, which is a very scary thing to do, especially there's a lot of people on YouTube, you know, you do covers and you end up being compared to the artists that you've already done. So people will listen to your music and they're expecting it to be something that they've already kind of, they're already familiar with. Yeah. And so they don't get the same feeling that they would get out of a cover, but with them, it's completely different because they're so unique, you know, which is again, one of the coolest things. I think also you said on your channel that it was a bit like poppy as well, but like in some, like somehow rock and it worked perfectly. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, because you can dive into some hard, hard rock and they have the ability to go there. You know, they can, but they still choose to kind of walk that line, you know, between the two, which I think is a brilliant strategy. And honestly, I think it's, it's more fun in the end to do that. You know, because if you go one full direction or go the other full direction, you're just not going to, you're going to get bored with it pretty quick, you know, and you're only going to appeal to a niche audience too, you know, which is part of the whole thing. You want to appeal to as many people as possible to get across what you're feeling and what you're writing about, you know? Yeah. Would you want to work with them? (laughs) Of course. Yeah. I mean, that'd be so much fun. I hope I do them justice, but yeah, I would love to work with them. I think it'd be absolutely amazing. I'd have to think about what direction I would take them though, because like- that's one of the most interesting things, you know, I mean, you know, your first successful album is a lot of, it's kind of an enigma, you know, and a lot of times it's all these songs that you've written over the course of years and things like that. And you just kind of put them all into one, you know, that sort of a thing. The second one is the one that really counts. If you get past your second one and things have changed enough, but it's still familiar, yeah, you know, that people it's familiar enough that people accept it, then you've done it you've really hit it. And I mean, you're not going anywhere. There's no chance, you know? So like with them, I really have to think about it, but honestly, I would probably end up, I mean, you know, Zeppelin was like sixties, you know, like a little bit of the seventies is when, you know, people, they were still listening to a lot of Zeppelin. I would probably pull from like late seventies to like mid early eighties with them and start actually following the decades because like, that's where you're, your mind kind of goes anyways yeah you know I mean like if you start if you go back I know this happens to me and you start listening to music from the 60s eventually you're going to want a little bit more and you're going to move into the late 60s into the 70s and then you're going to keep going until you get to like the 2000s and you're going to turn all the way back around and start over again so and I would be really interested too to see you know if you did take them into like something late 70s early 80s which you keep the glam you keep all that stuff maybe give it a little bit more of a queen make it a little bit more anthemic like bigger stadium to then for a third album revert back and give them like a nirvana sound would be really cool oh that'd be so fun (laughs) i would love to see what they do (laughs) but um yeah do you have a favorite song or maybe an album you love early (laughs) <laughs> Honestly, that, that's so hard. I don't know if I can, I can pick the first one that I did, which I think was at, um, I, I can't ever even say it, ZD Bonham. Is that how you say it? Uh, ZD Bonham. Z- yes. See, you're so much better at it than I am. <laughs> uh, I would say just because like it blew me away, yeah. you know, yeah. just because it, again, it like, I did not expect that even a little bit from them. I, had, I didn't know what to expect, but yeah. it was just cool. I became a fan when they did Eurovision I was like oh wow like this is everything I was expecting because I love pop and I love rock and I was like all right this is like everything I love in music this is the middle ground (laughs) yeah (laughs) I love it I love it so much yeah it's just cool it's so cool to see bands like this actually coming and like people being interested in bands again like I have waited so long for that to happen I know a lot of people have and it's just I'm so excited to see where it goes and how people move forward with it, you know, and grow and actually like see where the scene goes. Like, I really hope, you know, kids start forming bands again because of this stuff, you know, and and people start writing different types of music and and actually, you know, progressing musically with it. It's just going to be so cool. Yeah. Do you think there became an inspiration to young people who want to do music? Absolutely. I hope they did. Yeah. You know? I mean, I really, really do, but I would, I'd bet on it. I would absolutely (laughs) bet on it. And I think there's going to be a lot of, you're going to, we're going to look at like the younger generation. And I think we're going to see a lot of people again, picking up guitars, starting to play drums again, because it just looks so cool and it's so much fun. And you're like, I want to do that. And I think they will. Yeah. I kind of want them to do a collab with Miley Cyrus as well. (laughs) 
I, think, I know. I think it would be How like cool would that be? Especially yeah. since she has that like gritty voice now too. Oh, yeah. it sounds so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be yeah. great. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I think they tell they said it like a few times that they wanted to collab with her because they loved her. Oh, did they? They were like, oh, oh, cool. yeah, we love Miley Cyrus. And I think she posted it on Instagram when the because like Damiano sang like a song of hers. And I think yeah. she posted it or something. I was like, yes. <laughs> gonna happen we hope it's gonna happen we're hoping <laughs> agreed <laughs>